the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 30th day of this journey, Rebirth. We have about 10 days and then we'll bring this conference to an end. Um, we want to begin to thank God for the knowledge, the impartations, the revelations, the, the blessings that he keeps pouring upon us. My dear friends, nothing is more valuable than insights in the journey of life. If you live your life to chance, you don't have a chance. You are running with a vision, going on a mission, or burning with a passion. If you do not belong to any of these, life is reduced to a burden. That is a quote from a very good friend of mine, Bishop David Oedipo. We continue with the law of vision. Another word for vision is your assignment. God has an assignment for your life and once you discover that assignment, write it down. Make it plain. Make it simple. Don't make it so hard that you'd have to wonder what it is really that you are supposed to be doing. Put it in simplistic terms that you can easily understand. You may ask, how do I know my vision is from God? First of all, God-given visions are connected to pure motives. The vision will include you and will use you. But the vision will always be about touching other people. That is how you know it is a God-given vision. The vision will include you. The vision will use you. But the vision will always be about touching other people people god will not give you a vision that only impacts your life god is a global god you may receive a personal word from the lord about your life but this is not your vision unless it includes helping other people progress unless it includes touching the lives of other people so maybe god gave you a plan to make a billion dollars why would god give you a witty invention or divine idea to become a billionaire when it is impossible for you alone to spend a billion dollars you can only have so many houses so many cars so many shoes or wear so many watches you will soon discover that god gave you this abundance to impact others the greatest joy in life my dear friends is seeing other people enjoy what god has given you so in order for you to receive an assignment from god you you, you have to begin to think differently about yourself you can't think that you are unworthy or that God would never use you. You have to see yourself the way God sees you. He created you for a purpose. Many, many of the limits on people's lives are mental limits. We, we have, we've already spoken about that when we're dealing with the law of, of thought, the law of the mind. People have established mental limits by telling God what he can do or cannot do in their life. So you may say, I, I've, I've never told God what he could, he could or could not do in my life. Whenever you put yourself down or tell other people about your limit, you are telling God what he can or cannot do in your life. God, you can only use me to the degree I see myself. I always make mistakes. I'm always wrong. Nothing ever works out for me. Sometimes you tell God things like that. When you talk this way, you are limiting what God can do in your life. You have to stop talking this way. The, the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You have to think differently. You have to begin to say it is possible that God could use someone like me. I'm not perfect, but it is possible. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 to 29 will show us the kind of people God uses. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing, the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. Do you feel qualified now? Do you feel qualified now? God specializes in using the imperfect, the weak. The ones that God has chosen are ordinary people. Just, just because on the day you were born, the skies didn't split open and the angels didn't descend down upon your mother speaking prophecies, doesn't mean you were not chosen by God. In fact, if you are looking for any outward sign before you feel qualified to be used of God, you may never be used. 
if you are looking for a, a manifestation or or you are looking for a penny bush you may never be used if 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 you think differently about yourself god could use you your vision your vision isn't limited by your spouse it's not limited by your your neighborhood or the money you don't have your vision is limited by the amount of passion in your heart and i like to say where there is no passion the vision will perish people who have vision have passion in this life you must be running with a vision you must be going on a mission or you must be burning with a passion if you do not belong to any of these life is reduced to a burden god uses passion he uses desire god will lead you by your desires there are good desires and there are bad desires it is amazing what god will do through someone who obeys the good desires in his heart if you want to know if your desire is connected to your vision take a simple test answer the following questions honestly what is your greatest desire what would you like to see happen in your life now evaluate that desire is it about you and your family only or it includes others is a circle of influence as far as your desire is concerned bigger than you if the desire is bigger than you and it includes others outside of you and your family then it could be a god-given desire or a god-given vision god places desires we could also call them dreams on the inside of you and the way god would do that is by placing a little seed on the inside of you a passion a mission a vision something you are passionate about visions were not meant to be nightmares they, they, they were meant to, to to come to pass and and if you'll be faithful to develop that little seed that god has planted it will grow and bring direction to your life so my advice to you write your vision make it plain Begin to move distractions, confusions, turmoil, and negativity out of the way and bring your vision to reality. What you see long enough, you will get. So the law of vision, one, what you see is what you get. That one concerns your personal life. Whatever you hold in your mind's eye, that is what you get. Number two, God himself has placed a vision in your heart that you must carry out. All of us came on this earth with a vision have you discovered yours have you in this life you must be running with a vision or going on a mission or burning with a passion if you don't belong to any of these life is reduced to a burden have you discovered your vision may god help you so that you can discover your vision and live life to the fullest remember what you see is what you get have a prayerful day shalom and god bless you